when you're attacking temperature spikes you're just attacking different layers of lowest hanging fruit that's all you're doing when i launch apps such as discord games etc i get cpu temperature spikes what that is can be two things right first it could be that the uh fan speed ramp in your bios is set to slow and the, a lot of manufacturers do do this because there's no harm in a temperature spike the temperature spikes that you're talking about like a spike to like 70 celsius that's fine most people when they buy a computer they would rather they would rather the fans not do this like what's the most common complaint with g-sync module monitors is the fan in the back is like wow 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 it's fucking annoying as shit right that's why nobody wants that shit so default settings for fans in a motherboard is like detect a temperature spike and if the temperature has been high for like two seconds then ramp the speeds up that's what that is right that's one of them so it's like 70 c two seconds okay now we detected this let's ramp the fans up like this but you can set it in the bios where it's like detect 70 c for one millisecond spike up like this and then it goes back down spikes it'd be annoying as fuck but you can right and then that would alleviate the spike to some degree right um second problem which is the mo the more likely one right the more likely one thermal contact thermal contact Ther thermal transfer between metal sources not good enough okay here is how i would explain this okay you got your cpu cooler you got your cpu cooler let's say it's an aio um it's flat okay it's usually like this this is this is this is your cold plate here right this is the cold plate like this perfectly flat this is usually how intel cpu ihs's are okay this is your cpu your little clip up here or concaved or whatever or it could be like this right whichever fucking way it is i don't even remember which one one of the other it's one of these ones right now when you clamp the cpu cooler onto this there's a little bit of flex in it but it's really only gonna contact this part of the cpu all right so it's not the greatest so when you have a temperature spike all that temperature has to go through that little nub like this like 80 percent of the time when you're using your computer this little patch here is good enough to expel the heat but when you're launching an app it spikes up a little bit right now how do you fix that well you can lap this right so when you lap it you can lap both surfaces right you can lap it so it's perfectly flat oh fuck. well you know what i mean right forget my pain skills so that when both surfaces touch each other now the contact point is the entire thing so now heat spikes can go up through the entire thing right now water pump speed is also another one look at this fucking pump look at this this fucking epic shit dude water pump speed is another one crank this shit right so let's say you lapped it and the contact is perfect now the heat 
is going up like this, right? The water, the heat is now in the water in your pump. The longer the water is in here and not being expelled, the more the heat spike is going to happen. So just crank the fucking pump speed as much as you can so it gets the water out as fast as possible. Now, there's another layer to this too, which is your thermal paste, right? What if your thermal paste only has like six watts per meter kelvin it's gonna get the heat's gonna get stuck in the thermal paste here on top right it's gonna fucking stick there so like heat goes up gets stuck in the thermal paste for a second then goes up to the the cpu water block right or whatever cpu cooler you have right so the higher you can get your thermal paste the more this temperature spikes go away as well right liquid metal obviously is the best at 70 cryonauts like 13 i believe right so just use the best so so if you lap the die you lap the not the die sorry if you lap the ihs you lap this surface actually okay wait okay hang on let me, let me backpedal here for a second let me backpedal oops I don't want to recommend something that'll just piss people off later. Okay. You also have to pay attention to surface materials. Um, metal materials, right? Usually, well, uh, well the, the, the Intel IHSs, even though they're concaved or whatever like this, they're nickel plated. Usually CPU coolers are not nickel plated. Usually, right? So if, 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 you know what you can do to test it? You just take your CPU, you put it on a piece of glass, perfectly flat, and you just spin it like a top. That's it. It's a little trick. Now, if you spin it like a top and it keeps spinning, you have a fucking crazy concave. Then it might be worth lapping. If it doesn't spin at all and it just kind of sits there, it's pretty flat, right? So then just throw some liquid metal on it and it's fine because liquid metal doesn't really penetrate through nickel plating right so it won't like stick but if you lap both of these surfaces let's say it spin, spins like a top and it spins forever right and you lap it and you go down to the copper layer try to lap it try to okay oh my god there's so much fucking information here Tr okay so this is this is the top of your cpu right the concave is in the middle like this try to lap it where the copper in the center is like this big don't don't lap it all the way to where the entire fucking thing is just showing copper now okay try to lap it so there's a little bit of nickel plating on the outside left so when you use liquid metal it's not gonna attach or it's not gonna fuse itself on the outside here i've done this shit all the fucking time dude this is like a frame chasers trick right here liquid metal will only fuse on the center here you won't have a problem taking it apart after trust trust and this is good enough for your temperature if you lap the entire thing to where it's copper and you put liquid metal on it plus a copper ihs or copper cold plate you will literally break that fucking thing out of your socket getting it off dude you'll you'll take a screwdriver and just rip your fucking cp like you'll rip the pcb right off dude it's insane don't do that or find a cpu cooler where the cold plate is nickel plated usually custom water blocks all come nickel plated i don't know of any aios that do maybe there's there's your answer that's the best way to get rid of heat spikes oh yeah and a d-lid right fuck dude, god damn it and a d-lid right so if this is yeah if this is your ihs right and this is your cpu uh die the material between here is solder stock 
solder is pretty good solder isn't the lowest hanging fruit right but it is a fruit that you can attack right you can remove this change it with liquid metal so heat doesn't get stuck in here for half a millisecond right it's all about so when when you're when you're attacking temperature spikes you're just attacking different layers of lowest hanging fruit that's all you're doing right so if i were to make a list here of the fruit in order of of attacks pump speed that's the easiest one to change right just max out your pump speed right um and leave it 100 percent the whole time next would be the thermal paste e even like even if even if your cpu is concaved right like let's say um this is your cpu oh wait, 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 like, like this let's say it's concaved like this right you can st and this is your water block you can still put liquid metal on it like this and even though the heat goes kind of sideways the liquid metal is so good that it gets the fuck out really fast so even if you don't want to lap it just try liquid metal f well mm. i don't want to recommend liquid metal if you're a pleb but if you kind of have if you know what you're doing liquid metal even on a concaved ihs works really well right really well thermal paste slash liquid metal three um lap usually by this point your heat problems are gone like this is like like usually just these two alone will solve the heat spike problem do you know what i mean lap for i guess d lid would be last this is like <laughs> you don't and like like oh, here's another fucking thing with that too if you go into ida <sighs> the d lid could also be the lowest hanging fruit if you go into ida here right check this out you go here if you run like a cpu test and you see that it'll used to be the center cores right you see like core number seven is like 10 celsius hotter than all of the other ones that means you have like an air bubble in your solder and you just really got unlucky with the solder job right that means that this is your ihs right up here oh oops it, it, it happens it happens quite often too like like the soldering job isn't perfect right that also could be the reason for your temperature spike reason number three air bubble in your solder right um this is your ihs right whatever this is your cpu die this is the solder here right going up to the ihs you could have like a bubble right here it's like a fucking micro bubble but it's just enough to where the heat from the die has to go around it like this and then the core that's sitting right below it runs 10 celsius hotter than all the other ones it happens all the fucking time dude all the time if you see that in your ida the only way to fix that is with a d-lid unfortunately you have to get rid of the air bubble change it with liquid metal right even 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 the cpu die itself might be concaved if you want to go really fucking crazy i had a few 9900ks because the the the, the die was so much thicker and dude i lapped i lapped a few 9900k dies on sandpaper you wouldn't believe how concaved those things were dude and even if you lap the die the temperature delta between all the cores slowly starts going away it never ends dude it never fucking ends with that shit it really doesn't lap die i've done it all dude I, i've had some crazy fucking samples where i've had to lap the die liquid metal that shit 
it was more of a problem on 9900Ks because the, the dial was so thick, 1000Ks, not so much, right? Um, but yeah, there you go, dude. When it comes to temperature, you can, you can e even just diagnosing what temperature spike is, what, what the cause is, is an entire skill set, dude. Do you know what I mean? It's fucking crazy. Look at this first. I was say this is the easiest thing to check. It's just like, like check this out. You know what I mean? See if there's one core that's hotter than the other ones. X299 was fucking terrible for that because X299, uh, like a 10980XE, the die, this is like a 10900K, right? A 10980XE is like this big in comparison, dude. The odds of getting air bubbles in the solder is way higher dude the fucking temperature delta on these things is ridiculous because there's way more margin or room for error right way more anyway there you go that's it boys i hope that answered your question vlad get cracking on that shit dude you got a like there's a lot of uh just go through the steps my man find the temperature sort or find the find the reason why right find the reason oh also i forgot there's one more okay okay holy shit dude there's one more reason you could have temperature spikes that i completely forgot about one well, reason number one fan speed ramp two contact surface three solder bubble uh or i should say um core temp delta reason number four load line set too high just like the, the, this one should be literally back to number one what am i even talking about dude this one is number one i totally even for this one is so basic that i even fucking forgot about it dude you know what i mean check that first i totally forgot like or your load line is just set too fucking high that when you launch your app, the VRMs are over overcompensating. That's the easiest one to check. Just like, look at your CPU core voltage, right? R just press start here on CPU stress test. If this spikes up for a split second, then goes back down, load line is too fucking high, dude. It should drop. It should like like you you should always have V droop. And if it stays the exact same, like like so check this out. So in idle, my CPU V core is 1.36. I press start, it drops down to 1.34. If it stayed the same, load line too high. That will cause temperature spikes as well. That's probably most likely what it is, dude. I just spent like 30 minutes explaining that shit. It's probably just this, dude. You know what I mean? Okay, anyway. Would it be fair to worry more about the average temperature over spikes? No, always attack the spikes. Always. Um, the spikes are what cause instability like if you're playing warzone and your cpu is hovering over 70 celsius yeah that's cool that just means your fan speed is low or something if you see spikes to 90 intermittently that's gonna fucking cause your game to crash it's the spikes do you know what i mean uh average temperature if you're if you're comfortable where it's at you're fine dude you know what i mean average temperature can be solved by increasing the fan speed always you know what I mean? Or just get a more radiator. You know what I mean?